how powerful the word of God is. And then verse 36 says, so the same chapter, therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So he says, if you continue, so in other words, if you're not in the word, if you're not continuing, you're not a disciple. And I look at it this way, because, and I'm not going to explain that right now, but Jesus said there's 30, 60, and 100, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. And I believe the believer is 30 fold. The disciple is 60 fold and Christians are hundred fold. And remember the disciples, and I have that on, on your notes, they became Christians. And so that, that's just my interpretation of how I see it. I see everything in threes. Even Noah's Ark was in, in threes and the tabernacle of Moses, everything is in threes. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, spirit, soul, and body. And so those things uh, that we need to learn. And also in your notes, I have Isaiah 28, 9, and 10. Precept upon precept, line upon line. It's just like when you started out school, you start out in kindergarten. There's even one before that now. We only had first grade when I started. And what happens? You mature going up. But that's what he's talking about. We need to keep growing. You know, some of you after high school, you went into uh, college. And, and if you're a teacher, you've got to update. If you're a doctor, you have to update. Always updating. Well, guess what we have to do? We have to do the same thing. And so uh, our text tonight really uh, for disciples is in Matthew chapter 28, which is the last chapter in Matthew. And Jesus says, uh, at this time, he's risen from the dead. And chapter 28 of Matthew, and I'm going to start out with verse 26. We're in Matthew 28 and verse 16. And that's another thing, is to start using your sword. The, the word of God is a sword. It's our sword. And so we have to learn how to use it. We have to find out where the books are, where things are. That's why it's good to mark in your Bible so you know where things are at and cross-reference things. The 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When he saw him, when they saw him, they worshiped him. Now watch this, but some doubted. That just amazes me. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority. Remember, all this authority, he's given us his authority. And Paul picked that up, I believe it's uh, verse 17 in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So he's given us the authority to do something. What has he given us authority to do? Go. This is why as a church, we have to be a missionary church. We're involved in Africa. We're involved in Mexico and uh, different areas. Uh, I used to go to Guatemala and, and we, we have to go into all the world. That's why you, we have missionaries. That's why we need teachers going out. And we find out scripturally, we need teachers. We need prophets. We need the apostles. We need the pastor and teacher. We still need all that today. He says, go and make or teach. Go and make disciples. So this is a commandment from the Lord. And so he's telling us what to do. He says, go make. Not He doesn't say converts. And that's why I believe uh, the last time I heard this was about 80% of those that get saved go back to the world because nobody told them what is born of the flesh, you're stinking thinking, is still flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Your spirit got born again, but your soul is the same as it was before you got born again. This is why we have to show people why they have have to read. The, why do you read the Bible? Well, Jesus said, give us this day, today. Every day, we have to think, I have to eat. Uh, um, my wife will tell you, I like to eat three times a day. It's like, I got to eat at noon. I eat it, like to eat at five. I eat when I get up in the morning. If for some reason, I don't miss a meal. 
and and uh, I just my body knows. And if I don't eat right, if I don't eat, I get real shaky and weak. And so when he says, "Go make disciples," and Jesus said, "Learn of me," and he said. In the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day on Wednesday night and Sunday morning or whenever we want to serve God. No, it's a daily feeding, even if it's just, uh, I know a lot of times, and I've learned this years ago, uh, that the proverb, read the proverb of the day in the morning. And if you have a hard time sleeping at night, read a psalm. And I learned that from a, a really great man of God. God go. So we're all supposed to be going or sending. I believe that's part of the ministry. That's why we take second offerings to give you an opportunity to go. Because a lot right now we can't go. I can't go anywhere, uh, basically. And so it says, go and make. There's a making. Like think of the potter in the clay, what he's doing with us right now. Of all nations, how many nations? Remember in Revelation, it says every kindred and every tongue. That means there's going to be a representation from every dialect in the world, every nation and dialect, baptizing them. How? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them. He even tells us what to do. Teaching them to observe all things that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end and this say of the age, or you could say the end of the world, amen. So we know the apostles that were here that he talked to are not here. They, they're all in heaven right now. And so what, what is he saying here, except for the one? Uh, he's saying here that I'm going to be with you to the end of the age. So whatever the apostles got is ours right now. When you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, Peter said, Hey, they received the same gift as we received. And so this is still valid right now. He's telling us to go. And that's one thing that as a disciple, we become go-getters. We want to we wanna understand. We don't want to be ignorant. In Hosea 3.6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And uh, maybe you ought to uh, see this over in Luke chapter 9, just book over. And he's talking about the cost of discipleship. And if I don't say this tonight, when he says, pick up your cross, we've had people in a lot of areas that have really suffered for Jesus, carrying a cross, going up a mountain on their hands and knees. He's not talking about that. The cross is you. It's your stinking thinking. That's what you got to deal with. That's our cross. When Paul said, I die daily, he wasn't killing himself. He was dying to himself. And we see the scriptures talk about if you, if you want to gain your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll gain it. And uh, Lorna sent me something today that really said that. See, a lot of people, they, I wish I could, uh, if I had my phone with me right now, I'd read it to you. But it, a lot of people, they don't see that this change could be better. When we die to self, what happens? We become more like him. We start, there's just a process that's taking. Remember, we're a work in progress. And I believe it's going to be that way till he comes or we go till we get our new bodies. Now it happened, verse 57. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And those of you know what I'm saying here. He, he's look, he was looking for a body, and where his body, and his head. He's the head of the body. Spiritually, that's what I believe this means. Then, Because we know in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, he says, Come here, I'll show you where, I'm gonna, where I live. So he had a place to stay. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell. 
who are of my house. And Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And I believe Paul, the apostle, picked this up in Philippians 3, 13, I believe it is. And he says, Forgetting those things which are past, I press towards the prize of the upward calling in Christ. He knew there was an upward calling. And I have on your notes to plow. Plowing in the Bible is talking spiritually about praying. It's breaking. Uh, I have here Hosea 10, 12. Break up your fallow ground. Uh, Blow up the hard ground of your hearts, the New Living Translation says. And that, that's not a cell phone, so I can't say, please turn off your cell phone. That's, that's the church phone. I mean the house phone. So to plow is praying, breaking, breaking through. we got to always pray. Jesus said we ought, men ought always to pray. Uh, preparation, and it's for sowing. What are we doing? We're making the ground ready. When we're praying, we're making the ground ready. And that's what I believe he's talking about here. And then in Luke 17, 32, we're not turning to this, but remember Lot's wife. What happened? She looked back and and she turned to salt. And a lot of times when we look back, and I've said this so many times, that when we look back and we're running this race, what happens? I learned that from Danielle. Back. And she, every time you look back, what happens, your mind immediately says to slow down. And what happens when we look back? Satan, see, you shouldn't have done that back then. And it's, it's constantly dealing with that. So when we see that we're to go, we're to make disciples, we're to baptize them, we're to teach them, and he's with us always. In Isaiah 6, 6 to 10, he says, who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. Are we ready to say, send me? Are we really ready to say, use me, Lord? And uh, back over to, I think I will use Matthew 16. In Matthew 16, remember, Wednesday night is, is Bible study. And it, it's so important. It says study or and sh- to show yourself approved. And so, what? Why do we need to be approved? So, so we're we're a workman. It's not ashamed. We we know what the word says, not what somebody else says. It says, but we know what it says to us. In Matthew chapter sixteen and verse twenty four. And remember, there's so much scripture on this subject. And I just gave you a few things here. But notice it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. And I I have the word. To deny is to disown. To forget oneself. Lose sight of one's self. And one's interests. And... Paul said it was no longer me in Galatians 2.20. By faith, he says, it's no longer me, but Christ that lives in me. So we, we can come to the point where he has to be more important than anything else. He has to take first place. It's just like he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. That means tonight, service. And we've got to start realizing Uh, I like to say in the morning, I say, uh, uh, you know, commit your works to the Lord and he'll even establish your thoughts. And so our our mind, we got to keep rehearsing the word of God and how great he is, how great is our God. doing wrong. I was so happy when I talked to uh, uh, Pastor Helen uh, when she called me about Bobby and she said, 
uh, they led somebody to the Lord this this week. You know, you, you forget that that one person, who knows how many they're going to touch in their family. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And that's talking about, there again, you, you, your, your emotions, your will, and your intellect. Oh, what, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And so it's talking about dying to self. And how, how do we do that? Many answers here. Paul the Apostle, well, in John 3.30, I notice I have that in here too. John the Baptist says, I must decrease so he can increase. And when we start thinking, it's it's all about me instead of, and I have a hard time in that area. It's got to be all about him. Lord, what do you what do you want me to do? Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. What what would you have me do, Lord? That's what Paul said when he was knocked to the ground. And some of those scriptures I've already shared. He says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me. I believe with all my heart. In 1 Peter 5, 3, it says that we're to be, uh, uh, let me see, I know what the word is. We're to be examples, examples to our family, examples to the flock. So he says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. And when he was talking about you've got 10,000 teachers, but where are the fathers? In 1 Corinthians 4, 16, therefore I urge you, imitate me. And in Ephesians 5, 1, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And, and I give you the, a lot of scriptures there. And I put down 10 things, the attributes of a disciple. And this teaching I took out of my, uh, out of our uh, Wednesday night uh, discipleship class, and I cut it way down. But the first thing I put down was the attributes is, first of all, by their fruits, you shall know them. So the first fruit that you're going to know, do they have love? Are they doing that to get attention? Are they doing that for a pat on the back? Or are they doing it not to receive a pat on the back, but they're doing it out of love. And that's how you you know if you're doing it in love. How come nobody thanked me? You have a problem. That's what the, it says in the Bible. I just read that tonight. Why does the master have to say, well done, when you're only doing what I've asked you to do? And so we have to be careful how our flesh wants to be satisfied. And that's putting down, the, and that's carrying that cross because... You're going to deal with your soul as long as we live. It's going to be enmity with God at times, and that's the fight. Remember, Satan and demons are speaking up here, and God's speaking in here. So love, why did I say that? Because God is love. In the Bible, in 1 John 2, 9 to 11, if you don't love your brother, it says you're not saved. And so love is the answer. John three sixteen. he tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you get born again, you become a giver. It just something changes. And, you know, and, and I say these things because so many people think they're saved and they're not. Uh, somebody told them to say this, say this prayer and they did. And they never changed. Maybe it's because they never read the Bible. Maybe it's because they never went to church. But when you... And something happens in here. In here. And it, it's, it's... I had a very emotional born-again experience. And so I know not everybody has that. And I, I got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit about nine and a half years old. I didn't even know I was born again until I was 30 years old when my one of my brothers got saved. And 
Uh, most of you know that story, but it's important to bring up things like that because you should know the day you got to say, well, I, I've been a Christian all my life. Uh-huh. But when did you ask the Lord to come into your life? See, a lot of people, just because they were, went to church, they think they're born again. Mm. Help us, Lord, to understand what I just said. And I'm not putting condemnation because there's no condemnation, Romans 8, 1, to those that are in Christ Jesus. But I, I have to tell the truth. And the truth is, unless a man is born again, he cannot see or understand the kingdom of God. What is the mystery? Colossians 1, 27. The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of of glory. Now, what if we actually believe that? Every place you go, everything your eyes see, he sees. He's with you constantly. He says, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'll be with you in trouble. I'll be right there. When, even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to be there. And so he's always there. Then we found out in John 13, 34 to 35, it says, by this they shall know that you are my disciples. And so, how what was that? Loving one another. And then, bear much fruit. And we just minister on that, the fruits of the Spirit. So, that could be, uh, uh, he says, look, the harvest is full. See all those people coming? The harvest is full. Right now, the harvest is full. They're, we just need to harvest them. And there's many scriptures here about the fruit. And we found out in Matthew 7, 15 to 20, by their fruit, you, sh you shall know them. What's the fruit? Love. It has to be love, not their gifting. The uh, way I read the end times, uh, a lot of the ministers of Satan are going to be doing a lot of signs and wonders. And Jesus knocked that. He says, all you want is signs. You're an evil generation. And what did he tell Doubting Thomas that we call him? He says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Think about how blessed you are right now. Number three, abides and is free. And we just read that. And that word freedom is liberty. In Galatians 5.1, it says, stand fast in the liberty, liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free. Don't be entangled with the, the oaks of bondage, the doctrines of men again. F number four, I put down, leaves all to follow our Lord. And, and that doesn't mean you quit your job and you do all that. A lot of people have done that. That's not what he's saying here. He's got to be important. In all your ways, acknowledge him is what he's saying here. You know, like somebody said, well, poke out your eye. You know, he says that. He's not telling you to poke out your eye. He's using that as a comment. I mean, I don't understand why we take that literally. Then other things we don't take at all. Loves the Lord over everyone else. And that, that to me is a key for discipleship. Uh, I remember somebody that... Uh, this, this was a long time ago, came, became one of our elders, in fact, and never had any problems. We, we had church on Tuesday night and Saturday nights. Now, he's saved and going to church, and all of a sudden, all his friends wanted to be with him on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And he came to the conclusion, wait a minute, God is more important than friends even. So I'm going to commit myself to Tuesday night and Saturday night. And that's what he did. And, and that's what we have to do. Like on Wednesday night, you know, a lot of times we give up things. It's easier for me. I don't have to drive a half, half hour to church going and coming in the traffic. And, uh, but we, we ought to be able to take this time and make, you know what? On Wednesday night from 7 to 8, psh, everything shuts down in this house. We're going to have a Bible study. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, however you want to work it in. That's what I like about the internet. You can watch us anytime. 
and a lot of the somebody just said they watched something i think it was 2017 or, or one of our tapes in 2017 and it was still quickening <laughs> and i got quickened by them telling me what what i don't even remember what i said so that's neat so number six bears his own cross no you have to carry your own cross that's why it says, you know, if somebody's fallen, you go to them in love and be careful that you don't end up the same way because you're judging. Forsake all, Luke 14, 33. I have scriptures for all these on here. Number eight, the Lord becomes number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Colossians 1, 18 says, he has to be in first place. He's number one. You, I, I remember this uh, uh, apostle from the Philippines came to our church, and he said this, and I'll never forget what he said. He says, pastors, you have to be content being number two. And I thought, wow. We're under him, not equal, not above. It says we can be like our teacher, but we can't be above our teacher. And the, the love of money, which is, can be part of a root of evil. And, and we've got to be careful in that area. And so that was my number 10. A disciple of God is not going to be controlled by, by the cares of this world. And you've got to really watch that because a, a lot of people right now, they said that I think the last I heard about 50% of the people in the United States are really in depression right now. And the beer business and all that is skyrocketing. And uh, this is a time for us to get educated. My God, I was so fun talking to Lois. She says, I still haven't even plugged in my TV. I spend, I can't believe how much time I'm getting to study God's word. And she says, I'm just being filled all the time. And uh, I'd like to have us turn to 2 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy... The word commit is like when you go to the bank and you make a, a deposit. And so in, in this word, uh, men, if you look it up in the, in the Greek, it means human beings. God's word says it's talking about individuals. So when we say men, we're talking about both genders. So I don't have to say and women, which I, I can because some translations say that. But in 2 Timothy Chapter 2, he, Paul's talking to his son, Timothy, spiritual son. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Notice what he's strong in. We're saved by grace, not by works, lest anyone boast. Ephesians 2, 8. And that, what is the grace? You can't earn it. It's been given to us. I'm eternally secure. I don't call it once saved, always saved. I don't care what you call it. I'm telling you what I believe. I believe I'm eternally secure. And you know how much hope that gives me? I'm expecting, praise God, I'm expecting eternity with no more pain, no more sorrow. Hallelujah. No more worries. Praise you, Jesus. That is in Christ Jesus. The things that you have heard from me and this is so important, you know, because this is why I have to be so careful what I'm teaching, because a lot of you, you take that, but you have to study it for yourself to make sure what I'm saying is scripture. And, you know, in the Lord, last days, there's going to be a lot of false prophets and false teachers, and they've been there all, all along. But we are, it says that we might even be, even the elect might be deceived. So we have to be careful. This is a season right now of being careful of what you're hearing. And God is not the author of fear. So if you're getting a lot of fear about the end times, you're listening to the wrong people. If God comes today, praise God. If he doesn't praise God, are you ready? That's all that matters. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I love what it says in Psalms. It says, when I've been young and I've been old, I've never seen the righteous begging for, for bread. And I look back on our lives, how God has taken care of us. And I just, 
It's beyond me. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And, and I can tell you stories about that. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit or deposit this. This is one of my prayers at night for us. Deposit these to faithful men. Remember, mankind, men and women who will be able to teach others also. That's becoming a disciple and on your on your back sheet in Acts uh, eleven twenty six. Uh, I'm going to read Acts fourteen twenty one. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, how did they do that? They trained them. Why do people go to Bible college and stuff like that? If the church was doing its job, and Walmack said that we wouldn't need Bible college. The church is supposed to be teaching us this. This is what I'm trying to do for you. When the Lord told me to feed his sheep, this is why I give you so much scripture. Probably most of the people just throw this stuff away. But there's 48 years of experience in this stuff. And and if you if you're interested, this could be one of the best college courses you take is would be our discipleship class. It it takes me almost two years on a Wednesday night, and I only do f- usually 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. And so w- we need to commit this into others. Who's going to take our place? And we and I we even have in the bulletin to pray for the, who are you discipling? Who are you raising up? Who are we raising up to take our place? We need to start praying for the new apostles that are coming up, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor teachers, these young people. I hear there's a change in the young generation for good. They're tired of what they're seeing. I pray that's what I heard was right. Commit these to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, now he's going to talk to us. You, therefore, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And Sunday we ministered on putting on the whole armor of God and we found out there's no protection on the back. We don't run away. We stand. After you've done all, stand. We're not allowed to retreat. We stand. After you've done all, stand. Are you standing on the word tonight? I've even taken the Bible and stood on it. I needed so much help. And because it says stand, and I just, I'm standing on your word, Lord. There's so many things I could stand on God's word for me and for my family and for the church and for the world. Hallelujah. Therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Remember, a soldier has to see the victory. We as Christians have to see the victory. I see myself going through the finish line and I see Jesus just waving. Come on, Al. Come on. Run. Keep running. Don't tired. Don't get tired. Because they that they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Who? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what we're doing right now. We're renewing our strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Do you think we're going to be flying around? No, it's talking about the strength of an eagle. They have the sharpest eyes of any known being on the earth. We can see the enemy when it's coming. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How many of us are fainting today uh, because they're fearful of this uh, COVID-19. You, you know, uh, Lois said something today that really blessed me. She says, "There's I got blood on my doorpost. Remember the Passover. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, the cares of this world, both in Mark 4 and Matthew 13. Jesus talks about how Satan comes immediately and steals the seed, if you don't understand, or the cares of this world choke the word and it becomes of none effect. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him. I love that. He drafted us. Praise God. He says, I've chosen you. You didn't choose me. I've ordained you to go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'm going to give it to you. Remember, it has to be the will of God. That's in John 15. 16. 
And also, if anyone competes in, in, in athletics, now he's talking about the when they used to run the race there, the marathon races, and what they got for a trophy was all an olive branch around their head. That fades away. Watch what he says here. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Now, the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. And so we have a right to eat of the crops. Uh, a minister of God is worthy of a, du of a double blessing. And it, it's, it's amazing how God speaks to us. And so as, as we're watching this, and I probably won't get to it, but in, in Acts 11.26 on your sheet, if you have it, the back page, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was for that whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And so there's where that happened. The disciples were called Christians. What is Christians? A follower of Christ. That's what Strong says it is. And so I have, uh, like I said, there's so many scriptures we can look at about this this. Uh, discipleship and I think I'm going to uh, on your back on page 16 I have Luke 14 Luke 14 and in the parable of the great supper that which is also in Matthew and so in Luke 14 remember we're talking about discipleship And starting, and I'm going to start in verse 15. We're in Luke 14, starting with verse 15. And what I have here, I have our priorities, our possessions, our pleasures, and all these things. And I, I wrote down, not one said, I cannot come. They all made an excuse. How many times have we made an excuse instead of saying, nope, I'm committed to this and I'm going to do it. And that's what I believe he's talking about here. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of, of God. Then, then he said to him, this is Jesus speaking, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many Many are called, but few are chosen. And sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. It's already done. He said it's finished. Now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Right now, we don't have to wait for it. The kingdom of God is now, knowing not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Luke in 1721, uh, he calls, he says, the kingdom of God is within you. Wow. Think about if we just got a little bit of that knowledge up here. The kingdom of God is in me. The mystery is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Our priorities. Watch this now. Verse 18. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. Notice, there's nothing wrong with buying a piece of ground. There's not, nothing wrong with buying land. But what if it's in the swamp? Notice, they're making excuses. But he's already bought it, see? I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Now possessions. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. It's just like over the internet, you bought a truck and you need this truck. And I am going to test them. Well, wouldn't you find out if it worked first? See, he's, he said, 
I have bought. He's already bought. What, what if they're old workhorses or racehorses and I am going to test them? I ask that that I be excused. You know how we say, forgive me, Lord. Verse 20, still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to the master. And that was the pleasure there. Remember, scripturally, and when he said it, if you hate, if you don't hate them, what he says, I have, to, you have to love me more than your wife, your family. And all that means is he has to become number one. And so we've got to work on that because is he really number one in our lives? When he becomes number one in our life, this is going to fall into place. <coughs> Excuse me. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, go out quickly. Remember, all things are ready. And what's going to happen in the last days? This is what's going to happen in the, into the streets. Go into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And they're going to become the apostles. They're going to become the prophets. They're going to become the evangelists. They're going to become the pastors. They're going to become the teachers. Because those were, that were called made an excuse. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you have commanded. And still there is room, always room for one more. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them or urge them to come into my house that my house may be filled. Isn't that amazing? He's got a, he's got a, I'm going to read that again. Go into the highways and hedges and compel, urge them. We would think, man, God's calling. Man, wow, that's easy to answer. Evidently it isn't. That my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of the, those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Many are called, but few are chosen. And so as a disciple, we become a learner. And real quickly, I want you to see this. I haven't talked about this in a long time. In Hebrews chapter 5, and we'll be closing with these scriptures. And, and it says in verse 8, I'm in Hebrews chapter 5, starting with verse 8, that Jesus learned, it says, by these things he, which he suffered, he learned obedience by the things he suffered, suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal, notice it's eternal salvation, not today, and you, and you lose it tomorrow. To all who obey him, called by God high priests according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. And that bothers me. And this is a, a mean word, this word dull here, but it's even the word for uh, being lazy. So we can become dull. We, In other words, they were hearing at one time. How did they become dull of hearing? Oh. Pastor, you teach the same thing over and over again. Nothing's ever new. And and I'm, I'm so on fire right now. I want to scream. This word is so exciting. And how many times have I taught on these scriptures? They're new every morning. Every time I come to them, they're exciting. For though by this time, you ought to be teachers. We should all be teachers by now. Some of us, you've been in a kingdom. I know, I remember the pastor in Guatemala they took, they trained him for a month and sent him out to pastor a church. And then he would teach him on the phone, uh, on the radio on Sunday morning on, on what to teach on. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And milk and not solid, solid food. So even that we've, we've changed from, 
from in taking the word of God. Oh, well, yeah, I read the Bible once and, and we can't take solid food anymore. Pastor Al, I don't understand a thing you're saying. Get off the nipple. The milk is what I'm trying to say. I probably just insulted some of you, but that's what, what it means. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of God, and he is a baby. Remember, I'm not saying this. This is what the word says. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use, there it is, they're exercising their gift. Each one has a gift. Minister it to one another. Their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. So a mature person can turn away from evil. It's that simple. And then the next two verses in chapter 6 talks about the six basic doctrines of the church. And it says if you want to mature, you have to know these six basic things. And uh, maybe I'll teach on that next week because we haven't taught on that in a long time. But these are things as a disciple we're supposed to know, especially these six, six things. Uh, faith towards God, repentance, doctrines, doctrines of baptisms. Notice there's a nest there. There's more than one baptism. And of the laying on of hand, hands, of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. And I believe he wants us to know these things. So, Father God, I I just want to thank you for your word tonight. And I I just want to encourage you because I I, I just want to nudge you. My job is to just nudge you to want more of God. And, And the more of him you get, it's just like I've heard you cannot give God. When you give five minutes of yourself, he'll give it back to you. I don't know how it works. But that's the way it seems to work. And you can't if you're grudgingly doing it. But you know what? Holy Spirit, empower me tonight. Say that with me. Holy Spirit, empower me tonight. I've received your word. Say it. I received your words. I want to be a true disciple. Say it. I want to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Lord, you said that you'd take care of all our need. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. My God shall supply all your need. Notice there's no S on there. That's in Philippians 4.19. So Barbara and I bless you, and we say good evening, and thank you so much for being here tonight or whenever you're watching, and tell a friend. And uh, hopefully it won't be that long before we can meet in the church and still be on the Internet too. So praise God. Thank you, Barbara, for doing this. God bless you.